your instrumentation inside the dumb body. The extreme part where uh, extreme most part on the upstream side where the, the concrete dam touches the floor bed of the water water body is called as the keel portion of the dam. And the bottom most, which is that is the downstream, is called as the toe of the dam. So this is the simple basics of any dam in particular. So then I would like to just throw light on some other types of dams that we come across. Not every dam is a gravity dam, and there are different types of dams that we come across. If we can actually go through them uh, one by one, uh, just to, to give a basic knowledge of what it is. By structure, we can actually classify dams as arch dams. Gravity dams, buttress dams, arch gravity dams, barrage dams, embankment dams, rock fill dams, concrete based rock fill, and you have earth fill dams. By use, we can also classify them. The dams can be classified as saddle dam, weir dams, check dams, dry dams, diversionary dams, underground dams, tailings dams, and by material, you can classify as a steel dam, timber dam, and other types you have as copper dam natural dam and you have beaver type dams. So this is the overall picture of how it is. So what we can do is uh, we'll just go through as just a simple basic or a line of what an arch dam is supposed to be told as uh, it is actually an arch dam comes with a curvilinear upmost in the plan section. These are especially used where there you have narrow gorges and very steep walls. There, that places you can go for an arch dam. Where can you go for a buttress dam? If you go for a buttress dam, buttress dam is similar to that of the cavity dam itself, but it is hollow in between. This hollowness is also with some of the, with the purpose to actually have a support. They are placed at intervals. Hollow portion also is used as intermediate spaces, which are used to, to build up the uh, and reduce the quantity involved, the concrete quantity built in the construction. Then you have is the barrages, which are also barrages are also called as uh, the barrage dams, which are here as shown, are also a uh, part of the uh, part of where they are not actual dams, they are just a stopper or stopgap dams, a similar type of construction, which is for holding out water. Then you have gravity dams, which the major portion of it is mainly concrete, and it is self-rate of it itself is the uh, basics for any dam, the commonly used one is the gravity dams by their self they are able to erase the water and hold the water uh, which is required for storage and utilization in future. You have arch and gravity dams, so a combination of both arch as well as the gravity dams. You have other types of dams which is the rock fill dams which are built only material as rock fill. Earth fill, which has an uh, earth material which has been built with earth, as well as even have a portion of the uh, rock material where you have a cutoff impervious layer in between. Then you have come to the different types of uh, saddle dam. What is saddle dam? Saddle dam is a subsidiary dam. It is not a dam uh, in particular. It is just at the lower portion where there is a deepest portion, a reservoir uh, portion, a, a dam is being built. It is a subsidiary dam. What is a check dam? A check dam is a small dam which is designed to reduce the flow and velocity and just to hold water and so that the force with which it comes it is being arrested at some point. Then you have is the diversionary dam or the underground dam. What happens is the main water whichever is going to the main major places where you need to supply to smaller villages at, this, uh, at the tributaries and other, uh, other areas. So they try to build a small diversion where they divert the water inside. These are diversionary dams. So not a part of the main dam. Then you have as a tailing dam. These tailing dams are actually built from the mining waste or the, what you say, uh, mill tailings, which have been come out, uh, which comes out from a mining uh, mining uh, area where the ore is extracted and the uneconomical waste, which is out, is used as the uh, for building these dams. Then you have is the weir dams. The weirs are usually, uh, weirs are also similar to that of where the overflow of it is being uh, diverted, a river channel to create an impoundment lake for water uh, abstraction. Then you have underground dams. What is underground dams? This is sometimes what happens, the excess water which is on, you try to arrest it through an aquifer and store it within the rock mass or where you have an underground system itself for dams. Where this part of the underground dam where you have a diversionary dam which is a structure which is used to divert all or a portion of the flow and the flow of the river from its natural groves and they trap the groundwater inside and 
in depth can be utilized as a small aquifer where it is being held within the within the rock mass itself. Then uh, these are the types of dams that I am uh, actually wanting to present here. The issue Next, why we monitor dam structures. First is the gradual long term deterioration of dams is not a, is a natural process and we need to monitor them because during that, uh, we always have uh, certain changes, mismatches which are being uh, made, uh, mismatches, mismanagement, or which are la later leads to deterioration of the dam body, where there may be uh, some problems like lack of quality control or with the crack initiations which have taken place during the cyclic loading or over a period of time. The damage which have been taken place, maybe the changes in the geometry which has happened. The boundary conditions which have changed the characteristics of the system. All these things when taken into account, the, the, the monitoring of dams are, is a very important and essential part of any uh, structure. So we have next is the what is it called? Uh, what do you call a structural monitoring? Structural monitoring is a continuous and automated process of assessing any structure and the extent of the damage that has taken place to detect the damage before it even reaches a critical stage. The rapid assessment of these critical place, uh, critical areas, and uh, the especially the constant checkup of these structures is also being uh, called as the structural monitoring of systems. So, how do you have a structural monitoring system? First, is you actually uh, put in place uh, the different uh, so as you follow this flowchart. It is a general flowchart which has been taken. But you have sensors which are being embedded onto the structure, and once the sensor embedded onto the structure, then the data from the structure is transferred onto a base station. At the base station, what happens? You all the for all the data from the base station is transferred onto a control center where the data analysis, post processing, and all those uh, uh, all this processes which are being uh, moved on. And finally, you come out with the emergency response system which gives actual critical regions and places where you really need to monitor will be pointed out in this part. Next, you have is the finally. Now we come to our geotechnical geotechnical monitoring. Is it essential? Yes, it is very essential. A structure, especially a dam structure, can fail because of numerous reasons like design errors, geological instabilities, poor maintenance, deterioration of construction materials. During construction, what have been, what how a monitoring system can be very much useful. That is a geotechnical monitoring system. To verify the hypothesis and the assumptions which have taken place in the design and to monitor the safety during the construction, the changes in the different parameters, the interface ensure that the interface between the construction and the foundation is sound. And finally, to certify the performance of any new construction that has taken place. So, after construction, how these monitoring, uh, geotechnical monitoring will be helpful is in the performance monitoring of safety after the life of a structure evaluation of the effect of the structural operations like parameters like which we have actually putting into study like stress strain water pressure inclination deflections comparison of these absorbed data with the design assumption this can be a very good part of the after construction when you compare the during construction, after construction, you will you will know what are the changes which have taken place. Immediately go for your remedial measures and take your uh, before it reaches a critical part of actually going in for a failure. What are the uh, geotechnical instruments that we are supposed to put onto a dam body for a safe monitoring of any structure and uh, uh, and to detect its performance? Uh, we have uh, certain. Uh, obligatory measurements which need to be done and there are optional measurements also which can be done but according to uh, as we laid out it is in is 7436 part 2 1997 guide for types of measurements for the structures in river valley and critical choice for the location of these instruments as obligatory you should definitely have an update pressure measuring unit a seepage measuring unit measuring meter, a temperature meter, displacement measurement like plumb lines, targets and joint features. Optional you can have is stress, strain, core, pressure, seismicity in that characteristics. Actually for today's uh, today uh, today's uh, construction and uh, for the future safety of it, uh, these optional measurements uh, should be taken as the obligatory measurements also. And as per international standards, the International Commission on Large Dams, a large dam can be defined as any dam which is having a height 
more than 15 meters. So we come to now what are the instruments that we can actually we are going to put onto a damp body. First is we can have is the uplift pressure meters. They are uh, nowadays we are going in for the vibrating type. Uh, so the, we have uplift pressures. What does this uplift pressure used to measure? The hydrostatic uplift, which is given from the base of the dam, that is due to the seepage or percolation of the water which has taken place. Then you have a strain meter. What does a strain meter do? A strain meter measures the internal movements which takes place within the concrete no, dam. Then you have stress meters. The magnitude of the stress that has accumulated within the dam body can be uh, can be measured using a stress meter. No stress strain meter. There is a no stress strain meter which separates uh, the stress. The strain which we actually are going to measure due to all causes other than the stress due to the concrete load. Other than the concrete load, whatever the stress which is coming, that will be measured by this no stress strain meter. You have piezometers as usual to monitor the pore water pressure that comes onto the dam body. Then you have temperature meters also as an essential part of the monitoring system. We have direct plumb lines and inverted plumb lines also being a part of every dam a structure, every dam structure monitoring system. So they are used to measure the dam movements which are due to applied reservoir water pressures and temperature changes to verticality of the dam with any deflections which are there that are, can be uh, monitored using the plumb lines. You have survey targets. These are the last terms which when a dam Almost all the instruments are not in a position to actually, they have, they have lost their uh, measurements. We can go in for the target readings where we can go for external and vertical horizontal movements on the surface can be monitored using these survey targets. You have an essential part that is a multi point borehole extensor meters. These extensor meters will de definitely help in assessing the displacements or deformations that are taking place between the anchors at different depths in the abutments or at the bottom of the floor. That is a floor of the dam or the foundation just below. You have tilt meters again to measure the rotation in the vertical plane. Joint meters to measure the movements, uh, uh, measure, uh, measure the lat joint meters to measure movements along yeah. construction joints. That is the movement between the two, the movement in Inclinometer to measure lateral movement in the dam abutments and foundations. You have strong motion accelerograph, which is also an essential part of any dam monitoring system to measure the vibrations or motions in the concrete structure due to seismicity activity. This uh, I will just explain with one of the um, one of the dams which we have worked at extensively, the Puna Sancho 2 hydroelectric project that is in Bhutan, where we have been uh, involved in our department has been involved in the uh, in the instrumentation data taking care of uh, the uh, installations also which have been taking place there and monitoring them at uh, a very uh, micro level. So we come, uh, we, uh, this is our body which I will just go ahead with explaining. It is a concrete gravity dam of 91 meters. It's the Puna Sanctu 2 hydroelectric project 91 meters and with the two 23.8 meters in length, which is built across the Panasancho River at about two kilometers downstream of the TRT of P1 dam. And uh, we have, uh, it is a, uh, having one of the major features of a four underground biggest desilting chambers in the country, each of 420 meters by seven, uh, 17 or uh, 1719, 24.74 meters height. Then we have a, di a di uh, di 11 meter diameter circular finish HRT, which is carrying this discharge along. So to explain the dam, uh, just as a brief, that is you have is uh, left, uh, we have uh, non homo blocks on the left flank. We have four numbers, right flank we have two numbers. And we have in between, we have over four blocks of seven numbers and one auxiliary spillway, which is there. To come to the geology of the area, as we see, it is mostly uh, it is mostly quartz of feldspathic gneiss with pegmatite and biotite gneiss in between with intrusions. Pegmatic intrusions are also seen just right below at the foundation, the, and then you have a shear zone which is running right below the dam uh, dam body. So keeping all this, we have put together as a summary and a whole picture, holistic picture where we can actually uh, analyze the dam, where we have all the blocks put in together. 
the shear zone which is running from block uh, 4 to block 7 right below the foundation then you have a crushed rock mass right below block number uh, 4 then you have sheared masses uh, sheared rock masses and overall this is the holistic picture putting together the geology the structure which is going to come up once the construction is completed so this is again i will uh, this is all uh, required as we will uh, furthermore to go ahead with the stability analysis of this term i will come to that topic in the end so the instrumentation that has been done is uh, now we are involved in the pre-construction is a pre-construction or during the construction stage of the dam. So during this construction stage, we can only have whatever changes that are being taken place or the instruments monitor only the uh, uh, pre uh, uh, during construction, any changes that are being taking place. So after this, uh, we also take into account the diurnal and seasonal changes, the temperature changes, and so and parameters that is required for the monitoring the effect and detect changes in performance. This is the overall picture where we have uh, all the instruments aligned here. We have in green all the joint meters. On top we have the tilt meters. And this is the overall picture with the empty boxes also in the dam body. So going in for each section. So this is a well designed system as I would appreciate uh, here. Uh, that uh, the not, uh, all the blocks are being well taken care by at every level they are being uh, having uh, at every 15 meter lead or of height you have instruments being installed where you have uh, if you take an example uh, here uh, if we go for RLs A 783 you have a group of stress strain meters you have strain uh, stress strain meters and then you have uh, uh, piezometers, temperature meters, all together at the extreme left, uh, at the extreme upstream, as well as at the extreme at the downstream part of the dam. So the as we go through this, we see that the level of instrumentation has been taken care well in all the blocks here. This is the main block, that is the maximum sluice block that we see here. So the instrument is uh, laid in such a way that the major part of the uh, part of the instruments are mostly installed in the foundation level whether the interface between the bedrock and the foundation uh, foundation of the dam is taken as the main uh, main part of critical part of assessment where the major changes which takes place are being recorded at the base of the dam and the upstream and the downstream part near the heel and the toe of the dam so the different uh, these are uh, i will not go into detail so this is how it is being uh, this uh, instrument layout is as follows so next, I would like to go with uh, there are total around the 300 instruments so totally now going to be uh, planned for this and most around 80 instruments, 80% 80 of it is already covered. So we will uh, be seeing only in the next year, uh, only large parts is still a direct plumb lines, inverted plumb lines, inclinometers, uh, SMAs need to be installed, whereas most of the major instrumentation has already been covered here. So there is, uh, if you see the difference, now I just brought in Atpa Jatri Dam uh, instrumentation just to say that uh, see the level of instrumentation uh, which has taken place uh, where in uh, Ponasanchu as well as in Atpa Jatri. Giving it a comparison study here, uh, you can say that uh, the, the instrumentation has been taken care in such a way that even if some instrument fail, still there are some instruments already left so that you are no, not left without data. That is uh, one of the major uh, uh, plus points of this uh, instrumentation which has taken place there. Then we, I bring in even Thala. Thala is also a very good well networked uh, instrumentation network here, uh, where at every level uh, there is, uh, there is uh, all the instruments being placed. See, uh, there are similarities in the uh, method of placements of all the instruments right at the foundation gallery then you have the next layer by temperature meters next layer by all stress strain meters so this is the typical uh, layout usually which is being followed at uh, the dam uh, dam body instrumentation work so now coming to our uh, instruments here we have the no stress strain meters which records other stresses other than the main stress with stress strain which is coming onto the main uh, the concrete load which is coming on that is the major uh, exceptional of the no stress strain meter being used then we have stress meters which is of a plate type system which is placed directly onto the chrome a concrete pad and then you get the changes which are being the load which is coming onto this and the stress uh, the uh, stress displacement that we get then uh, this is how uh, we have now uh, during uh, construction 
uh, we have actually come uh, we are being continuously monitoring the dam body and uh, these are our uh, observations as we see there is a stress which is the maximum compressive stress is only 7 and that is only on one of the blocks otherwise all are well within the limits and very low movements are, uh, are being uh, found we come ahead with again uh, comparing it with the concreting level the amount of stress coming on to the layers the stress would be only mainly the concrete which is being uh, stressing on to the uh, instruments other than that uh, there are no other loads other than the sulfate which is coming on to the instruments so this is seems to be perfectly okay but uh, this is the basis for any uh, any instrumentation program where you start your installation and you see that till the post construction and after construction the monitoring is being carried out so that you know the differences of how the stress behavior has taken place throughout the life of the dam structure then you have is a temperature meter temperature meter observations are very important parameters which need to be measured especially they need to be placed on the extreme upstream as well as the extreme downstream and uh, because of which uh, the variations are a very important parameter to go ahead for the analysis of the structure anything is an indicator which can be put forward as a critical part we have piezometer observations these are the pressure that is being formed by the within the rock mass with the pressure exerted by this water which is being stored inside so this uh, this pressure is known as the pore pressure that is being uh, recorded by the piezometers which are placed the piezometers are usually placed at the bottom most and at the extreme places where you have maybe uh, uh, in future the points of contacts with the water uh, that may come along then you have uh, this is what we have a uh, small uh, observations also being made the range is very less say 0.4 kg per cm square to 1.5 kg cm square and then you have the maximum charge also change in pore pressure also 0.7 to 0.9 so it seems well and there is no problem uh, in the monitoring process or monitoring of the dam since it's only in the construction stages we have even in the shear zone taken uh, well in uh, place where we have the shear zone which runs right below block number 4 5 6 and 7 where uh, any increase in pore pressure is immediately been shown by these instruments so the instruments are well placed as i would say because the immediate monsoon period in july 2020 was built up of water column was immediately being um, read on these instruments and uh, they are and it, uh, the indication was helpful and even the match this time now you see in march there was a small rainfall precipitation which has taken place and these instruments could measure that reading also so then we have is the strain meters the strain meters were first of only a single one now it will we have strain meters five strain meters then you have is uh, you, you have now is the nine uh, nine one uh, nine nine type or nine group group of nine sorry it's a group of nine where at a different uh, angle of orientation so the strain meters are being placed so why do we measure it in group of nine group of five is because it's only not only x y z the triaxial method of actually finding out the strain the strain which is being uh, uh, exerted so going ahead with the uh, more uh, other uh, other directions also so we go with the uh, five direction one then we go with the nine direction one which is now being placed at kona sancho a group of nine has been used at most of the levels mainly at the block number uh, 11 and then you have block number 2 also then uh, this is how a uh, typical uh, installation would actually progress so we see that uh, the group of uh, when we say group of 5 and group of 9 uh, strain meter here right at the bottom it is being installed along with a stress meter with a no stress strain meter as well as a piezometer and a temperature meter so there are a group of five instruments which are being put together so what happens is a correlation study it will be very uh, helpful in future where you have all the uh, all the different instruments uh, that is measuring temperature pore pressure stress strain no stress strain all of these at one particular joint which we never get uh, at uh, places where one place you have a stress meter other place you have some uh, at a distance next you have a strain meter next you have a pore pressure meter so all of this is combined here at a different places especially at the dam as well as at the toe at the upstream as well as the downstream so this is a very good way of actually going in for analysis studies for any particular dam structure so now we have is uh, this is block 6 as you see the readings of block 6 block 6 is actually coming right in between 
so we see that whatever temper whatever concreting which is taking place anywhere maybe on the adjacent layers right on top or uh, at the bottom most anything that is very close to it uh, close to the main block it is all uh, it is all being shown on this uh, strain meter here then we have the joint meters these joint meters are now uh, may still seem uh, a little bit uh, very low in uh, magnet uh, low in displacement values of 0.1 and 0.2 mm but these joint meters in the future life of a particular dam are very useful because the moment of the blocks once the impounding starts uh, the moment of these blocks uh, transverse as well as horizontal as well as uh, in the vertical as well as transverse direction the moment of these blocks will make a big difference and actually to point out where is the seepage and where is the problem which is actually taking this critical areas can be assessed within the dam body uh, using joint meters and here we are going to have even triaxial joint meters uh, as an inclusion here where we have uh, six numbers of triaxial joint meters which will also be uh, be used at every alternate to two blocks in the dam body here is the joint meter observation so, so since uh, as i said this is only in the construction stages so there is not much of a changes since it's only be uh the most of the gaps uh, between the joints are not much uh, in uh during concrete uh, concreting you will not find much of a big uh, negligible displacements are being found so next you have is the major portion major part that is you have mpbxs which are being installed at the abutment that is in the uh, you have the left abutment and the right abutment as well as at the bottom they are used to actually measure the different the changes which are being taking place within the rock mass as well as at the bottom they may be heaving there may be changes of movements of the rock which may be upwards downwards compressive stresses and tensile stresses and they are in the slopes as well so they they form a major part of the instrumentation so if you have an mbbx so uh, installed you can get the changes in the rock mass as well as at the uh, abutments and at the bottommost foundation level so now here again we see the uh, uh, movements uh, which are being recorded here by the instruments during the construction stage uh it is a maximum of only 2 mm which has taken place so this uh, i think it seems like a zoomed view but uh, a zoomed scale but the uh, to just to, to show you it's uh, it's hardly moments of minus uh, point uh, minus 3 compressive strain and 2 uh, tensile strain which is uh, where you have movement uh, uh, towards the rock mass and against uh, uh, away from the rock mass if you see the bottom most how you uh, see that is this is the maximum moments which have been recorded a typical example if i read right bottom most this is how it is at 25 m uh, the different anchors uh, anchors which are being placed are the deepest anchor will be at 25 meters next 20 every 5 meters series you have an anchor being placed and the maximum moment which has taken this this is how we read it as the different the difference in the uh, in the um, readings which has taken place in the anchor zone moment that it is called as uh, towards the excavation or it is moving towards the rock mass so this is again uh, just to show the maximum moments which have ever taken place also can be uh, read as maximum of 4.23 and 3.73 so till now uh, it is all uh, negligible as we can say so just to keep it on a safer side when you know something there is a movement there is something which is happen, happening there so we should definitely take that into consideration and keep it on our, on our monitoring radar so next we have is uh, still to be installed as we still have automatic water level recorders sms inclinometers uplift pressures which will be done in the last extreme when you have uh, all your instrumentation done then the uplift there will be an uh, option um, means uh, the uh, means the uplift pressures will be uh, done in the last section of instrumentation here uh, just to present as an overall view so we see that uh, this is what uh, till now the three or uh, two years of uh, what we have associated with uh, uh, pune sanchi to uh, the dam uh, monitoring this is how uh, we can now just uh, present the stress condition at the different blocks which are being presented here so the maximum strain uh, maximum stress which has ever uh, taken place also the maximum stress which has taken place is uh, of 0.6 and the minimum uh, minimum stress that is the compressive stress which has taken place is of a maximum of minus 7.2 and it was only in some of the seasons only so now uh, the present uh, even you have the strain gradients which are being presented at the different blocks here 
by uh, just my analysis uh, by giving tables actually people uh, it is difficult so a pictorial presentation will definitely always help so to make a good uh, analysis of uh, the uh, actual condition so this is only during the construction so all of this will be very much helpful during the post construction analysis so now we have no stress strain gradients also being plotted the maximum also can be read here itself so for about uh, you have a maximum of 310.7 uh, uh, micro strain which has been rec recorded and a minimum compressor strength also has been recorded of uh, 263, 263 micro strain maximum compressor strength sorry. so this is the temperature gradient so they can also be analyzed on a scale depending on the depending on the different uh, periods of monitoring like we say in may uh, when you have summer and uh, in october you have a uh, rain uh, where you start may in J uh, june july you have the monsoon period then you have the summer season which starts so the different variations in temperatures also is being presented here for uh, analysis sake. So what is the outcome of the observations that we have actually uh, carried out uh, during these studies at this uh, at this dam of the body especially? We have uh, the stress strain meters have indicated stable trends. Uh, so we are well within the maximum allowable compressor stress and maximum tensile stress of 3.75 uh, MPA and 2.71 MPA. It is observed stress meter of only one showing a maximum compressor strength of 7.2. While all other stress pain were very, very low stress values of 0.2 to 3 kg per cm square. Then you have tensile strength observed at all no stress strain meters with NSSM being shown maximum tensile strain of 310.7. They in all piezo meters also indicate stable pore pressure. So one of the points that I would like to here actually point out is uh, in these piezo meters which are being placed at a shear zone, they have shown a small increase. These instruments are very helpful in actually showing the increase in the port pressure which is recorded in July 2020. And it is not uh, the magnitude of the uh, magnitude of the uh, displacement or the pressure reading that has taken place. It is to say that the instruments are working well and actually giving a good indicative of the shear zone displacements or the shear zone. Uh, what is happening within the shear, uh, shear zone? What are the uh, what is the pressure that is coming on to it? So there was. Um, uh, flooding of water which has taken place from the copper dam during the monsoon period and it has uh, got, uh, and it has uh, there was a buildup of water column at the foundation level and now during march also in the first two weeks there was a change which has been observed on all the decimeters at the foundation level so they are a very good indicator of all the changes that takes place across the dam body so then we have with the uh, then i would like to bring into the uh, uh, mpbxs which are being installed they also show a uh, maximum of whatever uh, from the time of installation till now the maximum changes may be 1 to 3 mm. So not much of a variation and uh, at some places there are only uh, anchor zone displacements of 4 mm. So it's all uh, well within uh, the negligible range only we can take it. When it goes beyond this constant moment we will definitely be monitoring the whole uh, by our team which is there. Then we have uh, this is how we actually come into the picture of monitoring. So now how to check the range of values being observed. The details of the design and alarming levels have been fixed for different instruments and they need to be provided. So what see these values, how are they being fixed? The designer usually fixes these values for different instruments. Uh, he, does, he comes around with a design value with an alarming limit so that these things can be well taken in hand and immediately can go in for a uh, the proper monitoring and analysis of the data can be done. Any erratic behavior of the sensor can be identified when it crosses the alarming limit. Say yes, oh, there is a problem there. Then you can timely recheck and replace those sensors, which will be very much helpful. And check the during reservoir filling the different differential types of reservoir filling and impounding. So what we would like to go ahead with is uh, to carry out even a 3D numerical modeling of the dam complex with differential height of reservoir filling to arrive at a realistic parametric value assessment since we are not getting the design or alarming values with us. So what is that we should see from this? What is the take that we get from instrumentation? We say that yes, the instrumentation is good, well it is done. And uh, yeah, we can go ahead, uh, uh, yeah, there is nothing to worry. But is the instrument telling you what you need to know? Am I measuring what, the right things on the dam body? Does this particular instrument measure the key failure? Or do I keep monitoring and measuring, collecting until how long should I do this? 
what is the usefulness and reliability of these values so measuring the right things in the right locations is very much essential in a monitoring the stability of any particular structure so no guidelines or standard can prescribe exactly what is required for your particular dam that is your unique dam that you speak of so then you have failure of gravity dams what what are the failures that i am actually going to expect from a particular dam through the uh, through the lifetime of the structure you can expect a sliding to take this sliding is when you have a meet uh, takes place on a horizontal joint uh, takes place when the total horizontal force is greater than the combined shearing resistance at the joint and the static friction which is induced by total vertical forces you have even overturning overturning what is overturning in the horizontal forces acting at a grade are more than compared to the vertical forces which are coming onto the dam body it may also fail in tension it may also fail due to crushing then what are the methods we can go for analysis we can go for analytic methods or we can go for there are two types of methods it is analytic method as well as numerical methods analytic method provides approximate results yes but they are based on assumptions generally considered they are easy uh, easy for evaluation and unrealistic in nature so with numerical modeling what we can do is these complex problems and complex situations can be developed into a mathematical expression and then taking into boundary conditions and we should go for a numerical method of analysis what do we come across when we uh, what are the different softwares when we come into uh, modeling so we have uh, mainly we have two types where we do the continuum modeling discontinuum modeling in continuum modeling we have finite element method finite difference method boundary element method discontinuum method we have the discrete element method so i will not go just deep into any of these things sir so finite element method is based on an implicit approach where you solve all the unknowns at a point at one time discontinuities of in limited number can be introduced in this there is an option in this so one of the software we here we have is uh, we have a rock science software that is rs2 and rs3 a gts nx also is being used that is from midas that is a 3d software also for a basic friendly um, means a uh, uh, friendly uh, software which can you actually start for modeling then you have finite difference method uh, similar to fpm only the approach is uh, to difference wise approach of solving the unknowns that is the fpm is based on explicit approach you have the flak 2d which does this that is by itaska you have the boundary element method that is where the whole area of the problem domain needs to be discretized or separated or whereas in bm only the end boundary needs to be discretized so discontinuous modeling is preferred if the rock mass is governed predominantly by joint sets if joint sets are coming where you have a heterogeneous uh, uh, material that you are uh, coming into so uh, modeling of that can be done by discontinuous modeling and uh, the softwares which are available are udec and speed etc the second by itaska so what do we actually get from these models uh, we we should be very clear of what the output or the results from these uh, analytical or these analysis that we get out that is uh, first we can do what are the studies which we can carry out that is a seepage analysis study the slope stability so slope stability study slope seepage coupled analysis settlement analysis so this is how we put forward that is analytical approach you get very less output that is you will get to know the factor of safety the phreatic lines the settlement values but when you go for a finite element or a deeper analysis you go inside for getting the displacements the stresses the plastic states as well as the area of volume which is actually going under settlement so here we have just gone around with a small exercise here for the same phpa2 uh, botan dam where we have uh, actually gone with the hooktron model where we have gone for a simple elastic model and to just to know the variations that have been taking place so this will be taken further on because this is only a section analysis or only a block analysis and we cannot be taken as a holistic picture of the total dam as in a uh, as taken to be for analysis with the bedrock so this is uh, this analysis is pretty good with some results which has come out where we can see uh, mostly some results are uh, good where we can see uh, you yeah, at the upstream uh, uh, bottom where there is the heel and the toe portions there are some displacements and moments be being uh, observed here so here is the main overflow block that is a maximum overflow block also if we run uh, taking in the pounding of water to be full of uh, full uh, full reservoir level and uh, where is the actual uh, changes in the stress or where the stress points will uh, displacements are being 
noticed all the uh, conditions are being plain stress conditions are being used for the analysis but we would like to go ahead with the 3d uh, 3d analysis the whole dam into uh, uh, into uh, into picture so that the actual stress areas and the displacements and that will be the values for evaluation of that particular dam during impounding or before impounding both can be done so we uh, this is how i would summarize totally Saying that step one, what would I do? First, identify what are the key failure modes and how they initiate. What are the key failure modes that we come across in a dam body? Identify the dam instrumentation required to monitor the initiation of these key failure modes. Then review the current level of instrumentation that has taken place. That is what we are doing. So we are not contractors here at Puna Sancho. So what we do is as a consultant, we review the current level of dam instrumentation which has taken place. And once we review it, if the current instrumentation does not address a key failure mode, then we go for additional instrumentation that is currently uh, being done in association with PSPA so that uh, the structure is taken care of. And if any other current instrumentation does not provide relevant data about initiation of any of the identified failure modes, decommission it. If it's not worth putting it there, so it is better not to have it. Then you go ahead for it install a new instrument there so how to monitor and what are its solutions we go for geotechnical sensors for all relative parameters what if you can't go with your geotechnical sensors you can go with automatic monitoring of sensors with gsm and gprs telemetry of also automatic total stations which we are doing now with sagasa rover automatically we have total stations which are being uh, used to call monitoring the changes in the dam body then we also can have finally go for laser scanning go by unmanned vehicles or drones which are now into advanced technologies of monitoring the particular structure then we have uh, all of this put through a club based web data cloud based web data management system and provide on data online where they give alarm and uh, immediately to the person and they can go in for uh, identify the critical area so this is the overall holistic picture of a particular uh, uh, the instrumentation, how we can go. Again here, the same thing what I have actually put forward. You can go by the different methods of monitoring. So it's all here. One is the sensor type that is next you have the onto the concrete dam body. You have the wireless type where you have non-contact. You can actually measure your deformations or the changes. Then you have further on survey by automatic robotic or total stations also. And finally, when it's inaccessible, we go in for the aerial survey or the drone type of monitoring of a particular structure. So there is always a method which can be always devised for your unique tab. So this is what I would like to present for today. So thank you for your time. And coming in saying that NRM commemoration of Bharat Ka Amrit Mahotsar. So Har Rah Par Bharte Kadam. Thank you so much. Thank you, Praveena, for uh, your uh, very informative and uh, detailed lecture on uh, instrumentation of uh, dam, particularly gravity dam. Uh, now the forum is uh, open for discussion. There is one question uh, from Mr. Chandan Gowda. It's in the chat box. He's asking, uh, can we use uh, GeoStudio software for the analysis? Software. I think uh, uh, these uh, GeoStudio software, it mainly covers uh, limit equilibrium analysis. Okay. So it is mainly used for analysis of uh, the slopes. So in a way, uh, dam is also a slope, but uh, there are other uh, structural features involved. But uh, I don't think GeoStudio is uh, used for the analysis of the dam. And uh, Mr. Saurav is asking, is there any uh, standard for geotechnical instrumentation for dams? Yes, sir, there is a standard. So the standard though, which has been given by IS, uh, IS 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 7436 part 2, 1997, guide for types of measurements for structures in river valley projects, especially for concrete and masonry dams. You can go with that uh, as a thumb rule, but that is not the only uh, way of uh, going in for instrumentation. Like I said, each one is a unique dam, so we can go in for uh, depending on the actual critical areas and, uh, act, uh, and the uh, and the movements or the, if it's a seismic zone, we should go for an SMA. If it is having uh, uh, stress strain and the pore pressures, so where you have shear zones, all of these instruments will have to be taken into consideration. There is an IS code for every dam. 
Yes, it is available. There is one more question from Dr. P. Balamadeswaran. Uh, can you throw light on geological factors being considered while deciding the monitoring system? Geological factors. Uh, yes. Uh, geological factors is uh, may, uh, mainly is uh, we should go ahead whenever it's a site selection of dam as it is called, where you have to take into consideration the fault which is running right below, the shear zones which are coming into place, the joint system with that uh, the bedrock is away. So geology is the major part which has to be considered for any location, site location of a dam also like uh, the slope movements or uh, all of this is based only on the geology of the bedrock as well as of that of the abutments. So these have to be uh, taken into consideration, these geological factors of faults, uh, any uh, any shear which is coming uh, into uh, into the picture at the bedrock and uh, 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 the type of uh, rock that we are actually building our dam on. Yeah, I would like to add uh, some more points here. Uh, actually, see, uh, it is a civil structure. It's a man-made structure. Dam is a man-made structure. So obviously, uh, it is surrounded by uh, geology. Uh, so I, uh, the foundation is, uh, it is a rock. And uh, even the side abutments, so that is also a rock. So obviously, it is influenced by the geological structures. So while designing the dam, all these uh, structures, all these uh, structures are taken into account, and the amount of load or the expected load or uh, uh, any other uh, like uh, the um, the water pressure that is exerting on the in the foundation or in the sides, all these things are taken into account uh, while uh, the while designing uh, the various parameters of the dam, and accordingly the ranges of the instruments that are. Uh, uh, put in the dam are decided and we have actually um, see the complete geology of the um, dam usually because it is a surface structure usually it will be known before you go for the construction of the dam unlike in underground structures so here uh, uh, we have the option of altering the standard uh, instrumentation plan when we when we design the instruments for our sites like your MPBX or the uh, your uh, uh, poor pore water pressure like piezometers etc in your abutments. So this is how all these geological factors are uh, taken into account while deciding a monitoring system. Uh, there is one more uh, question from uh, Mr. Ram Mohan B. Have you done any study on stability of tailings dam in respect of slimes of iron ore? Sir, uh, actually, I have not conducted on um, tailings dam. Uh, Shripaskar will be better to answer this question, sir. No, so far uh, at NIRM, we have not taken uh, uh, direct study of uh, monitoring of the stability of tailings dams. I think this is from our... Uh, Ex director Dr. Venteshwar Lu, a comprehensive presentation covering all aspects of dam instrumentation, monitoring, and modeling. Congratulations to the presenter and the HOD. Thank so, thank you, you so much. Much, thank you, thank you so much, sir. Uh, Venteshwar Lu, sir. I, I really remember, sir. Thank you so much. I, all the credit goes to first and another person who backs up is Dr. Shripa, sir, our HOD, and our director, sir, uh, Dr. H.S. Venteshwar. Thank you so much, sir. And you being also a part where uh, I'm actually coming up to this level of actually uh, work and uh, yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Well, sir. sir. It means to me, sir. And uh, there is uh, one more uh, question from Dr. Sayyad Arif, his principal uh, GVIT. Uh, good afternoon to all. Very good presentation by Jennifer, ma'am. Is there any instruments provided to predict earthquake to make the dams more safe against adverse effects? Uh, sir, uh, as I said, uh, uh, among the, uh, as, uh, as IS 7436 part 2, 1997, uh, where the guideline for concrete and masonry dam or uh, uh, in particular, which I have actually taken up in my studies. So it says uh, there is always or any study which will always involve a seismic and a dynamic characteristic analysis or a reading of that area is very much required, sir. Any dam has to have an SMA. That is a strong motion axolograph which is to be placed one right at the bottom in the foundation level 
one at the uh, on top of the at the crest level of the damn body and one more in the vicinity wherever any movement is to is to be found so this is a very essential part of any monitoring system sir that is a dam structure especially placed on a seismic area yeah these okay. are uh, some of the questions in the chat box and there are uh, others uh, other comments appreciating your uh, talk that you can go through and uh, there is one more uh, question is it possible to install sensor to old and historic dams for its stability? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, there are some places where if you have, uh, you might have missed, uh, means uh, the instrument has become old, it has stopped responding and the, uh, the lifetime of the instrument has actually uh, finished. That means 10 to 15 years or something, usually uh, an instrument which has been installed. Uh, uh, taking that example, what happens is at such, such places, you can go in for externally also being uh, uh, externally, uh, you can place your instruments uh, like joint meters now, uh, which are placed at Sardar Sarovar, which is the one of the oldest dams and the uh, uh, longest dams, 1.2 kilometers, where uh, the dam body, which doesn't have some of the instruments responding back. So we have uh, joint meters being placed, SMAs being placed, then now we are also involved in uh, the the crest level monitoring of the dam movements vertically as well as horizontally so yes we can go ahead with that also sir and if the instruments are not available not a problem we can go in for the wireless uh, system non-contact type also is available finally you can go in even for the the drone type surveys laser scanners so yes sir it is always there is an option depending on the type of the, the uh, instrumentation when we cannot place it within the dam body during the construction stage are there any more questions you can directly ask also? Madam, if we install any physiometer or strain gauge, whatever the instrument, uh, if we install at one meter depth, at what extent area it can cover to give the results? No, it will give you the uh, it will give you the pressure at the point uh, where you have installed it. See, because uh, see uh, the uh, the the pressure, whatever is coming onto that instrument, uh, it is reflected at that particular. Point. Yes, sir. In that case, sir, uh, how many, you know, for example, if we install uh, on any open cast slope, one yeah. bench, how many yes. instruments we required? No, like, uh, like, uh, see, you can, uh, depending upon your geology, and if you want to establish a gradient, see, if, uh, to establish a gradient, you need more than two points, right? So, yes, if sir. you want to establish, if you want to establish a smooth gradient, then you can decide uh, it. Uh, in consultation with your geologist okay, okay because uh, the see the water uh, the water pressure uh, it depends on uh, your uh, the structural geological uh, uh, this one uh, setup there if the uh, number of joints are more then uh, if, if if it is a very highly jointed structure uh, then the water may not accumulate at a particular uh, point it may just flow so in that case, uh, there may not be any water pressure developing or building up at that particular point. Thank you. Sir, uh, sir, I would like a uh, small, uh, uh, sir, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Sonam Tokki, sir, and uh, Mr. Jamal, sir, also is there online, sir. We are from the okay. uh, ESE Dam uh, Circle is here, sir. Uh, good afternoon to everybody, everyone, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for your excellent presentation and uh, thanks for touching uh, all the aspects of instrumentation of dam of HP2. Yes. Sir, sir, I introduced our director, Dr. H. S. Pankesh, uh, HOD, Dr. Shripad Nayak, uh, Dr. Jasser, all our senior scientists, all are here. Dr. Vakitesh Pando, sir, also, sir, our ex director, and I am here. Sir, this is uh, Sunam Tabge, sir, EIC of dam, sir. And uh, E of Dam, Dr. Uh, uh, Mr. Chamal, sir, also is there. Yes, sir. So good afternoon to all, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, so thank you for all the nice presentation. Uh, it's covering all the uh, all the uh, 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 instrument of PSP. Thank you. Congratulations all of you. You are doing a very, very good job. Hello, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Carry on. Carry on. 
you are doing very well i am very uh, glad to know that uh, the development is in nayaram congratulations and go ahead we have done in geophysics some studies on the stability not related to iron ore but uh, aluminum aluminum ore at um, the muri and other places six uh, four places we have done telling them study regarding the stability geophysical studies not instrumentation and there is one question from mrs santosh limiting the dam height may be based on the area of the dam site had required and water flow etc these are all will be taken when design of the dam yes all these things are uh, uh, taken into account uh, when uh, you go for the design of the dam and i can also see some uh, i i don't know whether director sensor is also there because Vita, generally i just Welcome listen sir. what is going on in nirm because i am part and parcel of your great organization so i just uh, gopinath lecture that uh, jennifer lecture all the lectures whatever in 2075 amrit mahotsav so i am part of it and i am really extremely happy that you people are doing wonderful job very good work so all the best wishes but i am always there bankesh sahab aapka scientist ka lecture suna hu sir wish you a very good health thank you thank you um, i am always glad to see you in always very high spirits that's the way the life should be and we should live like you we are making lot of efforts in this difficult times to share our knowledge and uh, i'm extremely grateful to all the participants taking out time and then uh, giving us an opportunity to share uh, share our knowledge yeah. yeah thank you sir and uh, i thank uh, all the participants uh, for their uh, patient hearing and for participation uh, in this uh, hour of celebration of uh, 75 years of india's uh, independence and uh, with Uh, we will come back again uh, next friday with uh, one more lecture and uh, the links will be sent uh, to all of you uh, thank you thank you very much Look forward uh, to uh, have you again uh, next week uh, with this uh, i close this session thank you thank you one and all